Hi there, it's Donna from Tappy Crafting. Um, I am an independent stamping up demonstrator in the UK and I like to make tutorials showing you how simple it can be to make beautiful, stunning projects out of paper and card and stamps and ink and just about anything else that you might want to throw at that. So if that's the type of thing that you like, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so that you get notifications of future videos that I do. And today um, it's a Tuesday and I'm going to start calling this Challenge Tuesday. Um, did you see what I did there? And the reason I'm doing this is just try and push the boat out a little bit. So I've got a twist and pop card. These aren't you. You've only got to put twist and pop into Pinterest or YouTube or Google. Um, and there are millions of these. But I wanted to push myself to see if I could make a video making a twist and pop card uh, without making a mistake. Um, so this is one that I've made earlier. And if you've never seen a twist and pop card, look at that. This is using the Forever Ferns um, stamp set, which also features in today's video. Um, here's Forever Ferns and here's the Forever Greenery DSP. It's just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, and I've used um, the new In Colour Just Jade for the background of this sentiment. And I've used um, Beautiful Friendship for the sentiment on white. And I think I've stamped that in Old Olive. It was just a while ago I made this. Um, I made this for a Facebook Live where I was launching the new catalogue. So if you go over to my Facebook page, which is just type in Taffy Crafting in Facebook, um, there is a Facebook Live from May the 30th. And in that Facebook Live, I make this. And actually with nothing going wrong. And then the mechanism is really easy to put together. And then I've just used some layering and stamping from the Forever Ferns stamp set and put that together like that. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So if you are a regular viewer of this, um, then keep watching and you'll see that it's not really that difficult. Just gonna be careful with some of the measurements. The other thing that I've discovered this week, just very, very quickly, is that 71% of people that watch me aren't subscribers. So if you watch me and you like what I do, hit subscribe. Go and hit that subscribe button. So what do we start off with? Today, I'm dealing in centimetres, okay? Not inches today. We're going to start off, um, I'm using early espresso. I know it's a bit brown, but you wait and see what I put this together with and you'll see why I've used brown. Very natural looking um, project today. This measures 20 centimetres by nine centimetres. I've got another piece and this measures 26 centimetres, no this one doesn't, this measures 30 centimetres by 10 centimetres and then I've got another piece that measures 26 centimetres by 9 centimetres. I'm going to start off with this one first because it's the easiest thing to deal with and I'm going to get my paper trimmer out which also serves as a scorer and I'm going to score at, I'm going to get that blade out of the way, I've had too many accidents this week by cutting and not scoring. So using the centimetres marks at the top, you are going to score at six and a half. 13, this is centimetres. And 19 and a half. So I'm gonna have to whack that bit out. 19 and a half. Like that. So this is the middle section. This is the bit that pops. So that's that bit there. So I want that bit to be facing upwards. So the middle score line, you're going to pop up like that. So there's the opening there. And then bring that one in. Turn it over. And bring that one in. And then get your bone folder, which there's mine there and just give everything a really good burnish like that really good really press that down if you've got weak hands and wrists get somebody to do this for you okay so we've done that now all of the stamping and everything i've already done on this otherwise this video would end up being about four hours long 
So that's that bit. Put that to one side. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. Actually, no, we'll decorate this now. So I have used the... Oh, I can't remember the name of the DSP. Let me show you in the catalogue. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's called In Good Taste. And let me just try and get this on camera. So we've got lots of textures in here. There's fabric te textures, tiles, bricks, wood, um, kind of like laminate flooring, carpet, that type of thing. It's, it's stunning. Absolutely stunning DSP. And that's what I'm going to use today. So I've got four pieces here. And these four pieces measure six, in, uh, six centimetres by eight and a half centimetres. I've used the Tasteful Touches stamp and I've taken this in shaded spruce ink. And I'm going to put that one there. And I'm going to put that one at the side there. And then in early espresso ink, from the Forever Fern stamp set, I've taken this. I absolutely love this sentiment to a friend that makes me smile. I think this sentiment I'm going to be using a lot in my projects um, for this next 12 months that we're, oh, it's not 12 months, 11 months that we're using this catalogue. So I want that to go there. And this is something, I've kept this blank because this is where I'm probably going to write um, a personal message to somebody. I do have somebody in mind that I want to send this to. Um, somebody who, um, I'm not going to say too much about it in case they watch this, but you know, just somebody that I've been thinking about recently and needs a bit of a boost, needs reminding that they're great. So liquid glue on this and I'm just putting that centrally in there like that. Now on the other one that I made, I used two layers. It's up to you. You do whatever you want. There are no rules. There's the other. You see that texture in there? It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Now, I've been waiting to make this project for two weeks. In fact, nearly three weeks. I did this on my Facebook Live three weeks ago. I thought, well, I'll do it again and I'll film it for my YouTube channel. This is the first opportunity I've had to do it. It's been really busy. So there is a link in the description bar to my blog where you'll find all of the measurements. And feel free to go along and subscribe to that blog and you'll get notifications every time there's a new project on there. Just a little bit of glue, a smoosh there. like that and I think my measurements of this one went off a little bit because that seems to be just ever so slightly bigger than the other three but never mind so there's my middle section I'm going to put that over there and let that dry so with the piece of card that measures 20 centimeters by 9 centimeters you're going to put a mark at five and a half centimeters from each end both at the top and at the bottom. And what you're going to do is score from that mark to that mark and score from that mark to that mark. I'll show you how you can use the paper trimmer to do that. You could get a ruler and then the blunt end of your bone folder and just run that along like that. You could use the scoreboard, although that's tricky to do that. You could use, if you've got the scoring tool and a ruler, you could use that. But you'll see what I'm doing here. There's my mark in the track there and there's the other mark there. I'm going to make sure that blades out of the way. Otherwise, I'll be crying if I cut it rather than score it. Put the guard down and score like that. And then you're going to turn it round and you're going to do, oh, you're going to do it that way. So there's that mark. And there's that mark, get them both in that track. 
Guard down. Score. The other thing that we need to do that I haven't done, and I have forgotten to do that, put a score at four and a half centimetres. I forgot that bit. Score at four and a half centimetres. I was just looking at my scores thinking, that's not right, there's something missing. Oh, let's get the blade out of the way. So at four and a half centimetres. And if these scores have been correct, your score is for this one is going to go directly through the middle. And that is, oh, I'm about, I'm an absolute tad off. But you want to aim for right in the middle of that. I don't know if you can see that. I'm losing the light here at the moment. So this will be your friend in this project. Fold and burnish and a really, really good burnish, like that. Now the next thing you need to do is you need to persuade these, I'm trying to find the right way to do it. What I'm going to do is just fold that over like that and fold that over like that. And what you're looking to do is get these long ones here, these long score lines, and push them in and get them to meet each other. And this folds over like that. You start to fight with it. If you turn it round, you're looking at it like that and then push that together. So I'll show you that again. So these score lines are going in. These score lines are coming up. So squeeze it here and push these in together. Try to lay it flat and it will fight against you and then push it all together. And then with the bone folder, you're going to just burnish that or you're going to find a nice strong person to burnish that for you. And then turn it over and do the same. And what this is, is your mechanism for the whole thing to come together like that. So the next thing we need to do is get back our get back our um, inside. And the next thing that I want to do, I just want to mark the halfway line um, here and here so that I know where to place this. So this was 20 centimetres, so just want to mark with a pencil at 10 centimetres. You're not going to see this because it will be covered by the centrepiece of our card. But just get a line there so you can see what you're doing. And then what you're going to do is just line that up there. Both these pieces of card are the same width. So if you so if you can get that lined up like that, I'm not sticking anything down at that point, but that's what you want to do. Get that lined up there and have those raw edges matching, which isn't quite happening there. There we are. That's better. Fold that in. And what you're looking at now is two rectangles and you're going to put glue on the top one. Bit of glue here just on the top part I don't know what's happened to the top of my glue pot there I'll sort that out in a second oh I've lost it line it up and then fold that back and then just hold it down for a couple of seconds just while that glue sets Fold this one over and you're going to put glue on the bottom half of this one. So I'm still holding this here. I am not left handed. So I'm going to try and put some glue here. It'd be quicker if you use tear and tape, to be honest. 
and then you're going to fold that one back. So while that's setting, I have just got time to tell you that um, today is the, what is it, 22nd, 23rd of June. I am filming in advance. It's the 23rd of June. You have got seven days um, to sign up with um, Stamping Up in order to gain up to £185 worth of goods and pay 99 no catches, absolutely no catches. You can just grab that stuff and run. You don't have to do YouTube videos. You don't have to do blogs. You don't have to share your stuff. You can just grab that kit and go. You can choose anything you want out of the catalogue. You start off by choosing £130 worth of goods. And then you would then choose, it then ask you to choose a bundle of your choice. Now those bundles will range up to the value of, I think the most expensive one is around about £55. And so you would choose that. The only decision you have to make, the toughest decision, is how you're going to spend that £130. Um, you would need to choose a demonstrator. I hope that you would choose myself. You, you would just put into the name of your demonstrator name, just put the name Donna Lester. Um, L-E-S-T-E-R. I'm based in Mid Wales in the UK, but that doesn't matter due to the lovely powers of social media. Um, I can keep in touch with you all the time and you can come and join Team Taffy um, along with along with my other teammates. OK, so if you want to know more about that, all you've got to do is just drop me an email at taffycrafting at gmail dot com or you can send me a message through my blog or comment on the video. Entirely up to you. So that was just time to get that to set. And so there we are, that's that there. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is now put this into our card. So what I'm going to do now is put a score line. This measures 30 centimetres by 10 centimetres and I need a score line halfway. So find the 15 centimetre mark and score and that's the front of our card or the front and the back of our card now let me decorate the front no I'm not I'm going to put my mechanism in the middle that's what I'm going to do first so remember what we did before this all folds in like That all folds in on itself like that. That's what you want to get it towards. Never mind everything that's attached to it. You get back to that. And what you're going to do is just position that into the middle. Let's make a mark so we know where that's going to go. So we're going to mark that at five centimetres. So mark that there. But what's also important is that this is straight. You've got equal amount of distance here and here. Now I know it's difficult to see because this is all brown but it just makes a difference when you see what we're going to put on the front of it. So the first thing I'm going to do, you also need a little gap there so fold that over and just make sure that it folds nicely. It is literally a smidge underneath that score line and if you want to know how much a smidge is it's slightly more than a tad. Probably thinking what the heck is she going on about? If you're not from the UK, it's a British term that means just a little bit, a tiny bit. I need to sort out the top of my glue. That's terrible. Fold that over and you wait for that to set. You don't have to join my Stamping Up team. If you just want to purchase anything from me, all of the products that I've used in this project um, are detailed in my blog post, which is the link to which is in the description bar. And if you quote the hostess code, which you will see quoted in the blog, then you can receive freebies from me. I'm gonna turn that over and I'm going to do the same here. And I did have a cloth for the end of my glue. I don't know what's gone on with that. 
and then we're just going to put that on there like that fold that over and you've got the same little bit of time I haven't got any funny anecdote for you now you can shop with me you can join my team but that offer runs out on the 30th of June. After the 30th of June, that's it. And it will be a while before there's another special offer. The annual catalogue is amazing. Absolutely beautiful. I have to say, I haven't come across an annual catalogue like this. I've been with Stampin' Up for three years. And I've seen, in my time, three, four annual catalogues. This one is super duper. Okay, so you would probably have a bit more time to let that dry. Work out what's the front of your card. So that opens up like that. So that is the front of my card. So I'm going to decorate this with the following. So I've got some In Good Taste DSP. Look at that lovely brick. How beautiful is that? It's almost 3D. I almost want to run my hand over that and, and think that that is actually brick. Um, it is stunning. And on the back of that, we've got that lovely wood effect. It's like laminate flooring. And I'm going to stick that to the front of my card. So I wanted to get this project done in 25 minutes and I'm already at 21 and a half. That's two long videos this week. I just filmed one for Thursday. That's quite a long one. And then today's is going to be a long one as well. I'm sorry. I just love that. It's just so lovely. Then... Good job I've already done this already. From the Basket of Bloom stamp set, I have stamped out the bucket, flower pot, whatever you want to call it. I stamped it out in early espresso ink and then I coloured that in light crumb cake, um, light crumb cake uh, stamping blend. God, I couldn't remember what it was called. Then I've done some die cutting. So using the, I can't remember the name of the dies, but they are the Forever Fern dies. So I've stamped them. So here's the Forever Fern stamp set. So I've stamped out this, these, and that. So I've stamped these out in Old Olive on very vanilla cardstock because I think that looks better against that backdrop. And then I've stamped these in Rococo Rose. I can't do... Um, die cutting on screen just because uh, I can't get my big shot in focus or oh, in in shots rather so I'm going to glue these down and then stick them down I want them on the bottom part of the card because I've got a sentiment to go on the top so I'm just making sure that the stems of my leaves are towards the bottom of the card and they'll be covered up, the bottom will be covered up with, <clears throat> with my plant pot or my bucket as I just called it. I do mean a plant pot. You can tell I haven't got green fingers. But the intended recipient of this card does. She will appreciate the flowers. Now I've said before that I like to make videos and tutorials for simple crafting and there isn't really anything majorly difficult. Some of those score lines on, on, the, on the actual card are tricky and I've tried to keep that as simple as possible. Just give it a go. So there's my plant pot and I'm, I, what I want to do once I've glued it is just slip that underneath that flower like that. Obviously you'll have more time when you're making this and you'll make sure that everything is in place and the glue is glued down properly and stuff like that.
So I've used the Tasteful Label dies and I've created a label like that. And I've taken this from the Forever Fern stamp set, the Hello, and I've stamped that in Early Espresso. And I'm going to, I did think about having a sentiment over my flower pot, but I didn't want that, I wanted it at the top. And I am just literally saying hello. The, um, the person I've made this for, I work with them and I haven't seen them for so long. I've seen them on meetings, um, you know, online meetings, but haven't seen her in the flesh. And I remember when I saw her after what was about two and a half months and she changed her computer and so that she then had a camera that was working. And I was so overjoyed to see her face. It was like, oh, hello. We work very closely together. We've got to know each other extremely well. And um, I have to say, I'm missing her absolutely loads. So let's put that on there like that. Hopefully that is straight. Yep. So there's the front of my card. There's the middle of my card. Now, we need to have some inserts here to cover that up. And so I'm just going to have that wood effect in there. And you can write on that if you want to. You can put a sentiment there as well. Now I just need to do something very simple with this. So I'm going to be using this wood effect. I'm going to turn that round, although that's very nice, but I'm going to turn this round and I'm going to make a mark at four centimetres on either side. What you have to watch with this bit is the direction. You'll see why in a minute. So mark either side at four centimetres from the top. And then this is nine and a half centimetres wide and mark at four and three quarters, or about four and seven eighths, I think it is, but in the middle, roughly in the middle. So this measures, and I forgot to tell you what this measures, nine and a half centimetres by 14 and a half centimetres. And what we're going to do is just slice those off. And you're going to do that on both of these. Like that. And... like that. I know this is a long video. I absolutely hope it's worth it that it makes you think I'm going to have a go of this. I can do this. This goes in the top of your card so it's going to go in that way. So if you've got directional paper make sure that you know what's the top and what's the bottom of it. I don't have to worry about this with this one thank goodness and I deliberately don't choose directional paper for this otherwise I get it very very wrong. And if you've used your last piece of that paper, you're kicking yourself. And I've gone and put marks on the right side when actually I should have put it on the wrong side. Never mind. That's because I'm talking at the same time. So, yes, I'm very grateful that you're sticking with me. For those of you that are still watching now, I hope it's worth it. So you're just creating a point. And you'll see why. I'll show you what we're going to do with these two pieces. And this is the very last thing we're going to do. You're going to take that. And let me show you. That's going to go in there like that. So that's why we have to take the top off. And for some reason, this one's not fitting. I'm going to have to take a piece off the bottom. So it fits into there okay. Let me try and show you. It fits into there okay but it's just too long here. So I'm just going to take half a centimetre off. Let's see if that's better. That is much better. So actually that needs to be, whatever I said that was, 14 centimetres. Get some glue on it. I'm even going to go past the 30 minute mark. You're doing well if you're still with me. And I'm very grateful. I'm hoping to be able to do my first Facebook Live in the next couple of weeks. So if you like, not a Facebook Live, a YouTube Live. 
So if you subscribe and you'd like to join me, I'll probably do it in the evening one day. Let's see if this one's any better. No, I've got to lop off half a centimetre off of that as well. Something went wrong with my measurements there. So I think where I gave, gave that as a 14 and a half centimetre measurement, it should actually be 14. But the measurement details are all in my blog. So please don't worry about scribbling them down. I will make sure that's changed in my blog. So very last piece now that's going to go on here. Now the very first video I watched of somebody doing a twist and pop card is that there was no narrative on it. It was very difficult to see anything. So I'm hoping that even though this video is over 30 minutes long, that it enables you to really properly see how to put this together. And I challenged myself today to do this video with no mistakes. And apart from that little half inch, that half centimetre I had to take off there, no big mistakes. Now I think at this point, I'm happy with that. I think if I was going to just take this up a notch, I think I might stamp some flowers on there or maybe um, punch out some flowers um, and put those on there as well, possibly. But it's all about that twisting and pop technique. So I hope you like that project. I hope it gives you some um, some inspiration to have a go. Don't be scared of doing it. Perhaps use some scrap card to start off with. Don't use your best card um, and perhaps practice that mechanism on some paper before you have a go. I've used lots of different um, stamping up things on here, but you could use whatever you've got in your craft stash. So thank you for joining me and I'll be back again soon on Sunday. We've got Share It on a Sunday and this week we have a sketch challenge. I'll see you then. Bye bye.